Oppo is not a well-known brand outside its home country China and people don't try to experiment a lot if they already had solid choices in front of them. Though things changed and uh, it has been a good change for the company since they have improved their design choices with the last year's lineup. Now this time around we are talking about the Oppo R5 which had the crown of the world's slimmest smartphone until Vivo stared from it. But that's not what this device is all about, it's what we felt after using it for a couple of weeks. Hi, this is Amit and you're watching the review of the slimmest smartphone from Oppo, that's the Oppo R5. Talking about the design, it has a unibody built and what we could call a metal body. It feels very solid for 4.85mm thickness and uh, that might actually be its USB rather than the slimness. There are two black bands present at the bottom and top edges of the device. The unibody design means non-removable back panel, meaning you can't remove the battery. The SIM card slot for single SIM is placed on the bottom of the left edge. Unfortunately, with a single body design and slimness, there is no room left for the micro SD card. The Oppo R5 has extremely minimal and flat design. It is comfortable to hold the device thanks to its overall thinness. While with most of the thin device, it feels like the quality has been compromised by the design. But with R5, the feeling is different. While with most of the thin devices, it feels like the quality has been compromised by the design but with R5 the feeling is quite different. It's most solid slim smartphone we have ever used. You can find the metal finished volume rockers and power buttons on the right edge while there's nothing on the top edge. No 3.5mm headphone jack, guess all that slimness does come with the cost. Although the company did manage to provide you an extension which you can attach to the micro USB present and on the bottom edge and plug it to a 3.5mm headset jack. The SIM card slot is placed on the left edge bottom. There is no dedicated speaker for audio, rather the earpiece acts as a speaker. The company obviously had to compromise on the hardware part due to the science constraints. The Oppo R5 comes with 5.2 inches Full HD display with a PPI of 425 and it gives that crisp and clear image that you should expect from a Full HD display. The company uses AMOLED display technology on its panels which gives vibrant and graphic results although sometimes they were inaccurate too. Like when we took the device under sunlight, the color oversaturation was present. The viewing angles on the device are pretty good as it shows minimal color shifting. Not going to a quad HD display is a good choice as all these high resolution displays do drain the battery life quicker. For most of the people, the full HD display is good enough and we are one of them. The R5 runs on Oppo's custom interface that's the color OS 2.0. We notice it is slightly different than what we saw on the company's N3 model. The color on its launcher are darker than what we found in the N3 and since the dark colors use less power than bright colors, therefore it does make sense to use them on the R5, especially because of the low battery rating on the device. This is not much to like about a launcher developed by Chinese mobile vendor because they are copying the Apple iOS, that's what we always hear in the tech community. Well this is something one should be open minded and that's what we did here. It may not have the app drawer, it even forces you to arrange the apps manually. It has some of the most amazing gesture inputs to offer and it varies from screen off functions to screen on functions. Though it was unresponsive at some times but overall we can say that it was fun using the color OS even with few bumps on the road. The R5 packs a Snapdragon 615 processor alongside 2GB of RAM. The 600 series of Qualcomm processor lies in the range of upper mid range class and we are more than pleased with 615 performance. The web browsing on the device is snappy as well as games run pretty smooth. There is no issue with gameplay even with high graphic setting. The main problem we faced about the device is in its 2000mAh battery life as it drains quickly. The R5 also tends to heat up a lot considering that it has a unibody design as well as the Snapdragon 615 which always has these heating issues. We are not saying that because of the fact that uh, we have experience with 615 powered devices like the HTC Desire A20, the Galaxy A7 and the U Eureka. As we had already mentioned, there are some compromises made by the company in order to make a 4.85mm slim device resulting in it to fit only a 2000mAh battery. We have used many smartphones over the past few years and there are some devices that didn't even last for a day. But after using the Oppo R5 for a couple weeks now, this would be the first time we would describe a battery life to be too terrible. For a price of around 30,000 rupees, if a device can't give you charge of at least a day, it begs the question if it's even worth having it. 
In terms of the camera, the device comes with a 13 megapixel rear shooter. Alongside comes a Sony sensor and LED flash. Company have kept the camera app clean, intuitive, and simple to use. You won't find much of a manual control except the expert mode. Therefore, snapping photos is pretty straightforward. But the fact that it offers download modes is pretty sweet. There are up to 14 modes you can add and select to take photos with. Like there's an ultra HD, after focus, super macro, etc. All of these are pretty handful if you are a photography enthusiast. But on the plus side, the camera boasts a pretty fast shutter speed, making it damn easy to fire off shots continuously. The image quality of the normal mode is not that impressive, while the 30 megapixel should give you plenty of details, although the overexposure tendency of the camera results in otherwise. Oppo has included a slow shutter mode on the app that allows it to keep its shutter open for a longer interval, allowing it to capture more light and thus more details, a lot less noise on the photos with shutter mode than in normal mode. The Ultra HD mode that is uh, so popular for taking 50 megapixel shots has been integrated as one of the modes. The resulting image is much sharper and offers more details than what you can think. But with its 16GB internal storage and lack of a micro HD card, you can get shorthanded as space would run out soon. Now let's talk about the final verdict. The R5 is an elegant phone with a solid body. It is something what casual smartphone users would prefer. They would use it as a tech accessory rather than as a tool for long surfing and gameplay. The physical appearance if the device is the USB of it whereas software experience would be more pleasing with little more tweaks. If you are looking for a super slim smartphone then the R5 is a good option. If you are not the one who would like to compromise the battery life and other hindrances it comes with then you should not look back again. This was our review of the Oppo's slimmest smartphone that's the R5. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and let us know in the comment section if you have any queries around this smartphone. This was our review of the Oppo R5. Don't forget to subscribe to PhoneData for more reviews. Do check out the link in the description for a detailed review and the complete camera samples. This is Amit signing off and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thank you.